when we consult a map or draw compass directions on a piece of paper. It's conventional to take north to run up the paper away from us. In that case south is in directly the opposite direction towards us. With north and south established in that way we then take west to be directly to the left and east to be directly to the right. We now have a grid of four directions with 90 degrees between each adjacent pair of directions. I've marked in one of those 90 degrees but the other three are the same. Often it's convenient to refer to directions in between these primary four directions. For example, we could talk about northeast. Northeast is taken to be the direction exactly halfway between north and east. Let's put this in on another picture. Here's northeast. Now remember, we have a 90 degree angle between north and east, and northeast is defined to be specifically exactly halfway between. That means that we have two equal angles of 45 degrees between north and northeast, and between northeast and east. We can put in the other combinations southeast, northwest, and southwest. I'll do this here and mark in some of the angles, but I won't write them all in because it'll get a bit cluttered. Here's the full picture. I've put in enough of the angles for you to deduce that the missing ones that I haven't put in must also be 45 degrees. Actually, we sometimes take this halving a step further again and talk about intermediate angles, for example, between north and northeast. Such an angle would be called north-northeast or abbreviated NNE. Similarly, the angle exactly halfway between east and southeast would be called east-southeast and abbreviated ESE. Here's a picture showing these two directions. Once again, we're talking about halving the angle, but this time halving 45 degrees. So the angles in between these directions are now 22 and a half degrees in each case. I've put in the couple that I mentioned but I'll leave you to fill in the other combinations. I now want to look at an example incorporating compass directions. Here is such an example. An explorer walks 10 kilometers due west starting from a point O, then walks a further 7 kilometers south before stopping for lunch at a point L. The question is, at the lunch break, how far is the explorer from the original starting point, O, and what is the direction of O from L? This problem can be solved by drawing a picture, first of all of the actual trajectory walked by the explorer, and then by filling in a third side to make a right angle to triangle. Let's do that here now in stages. Here's the path walked, and here I've drawn in the third side to make a right angled triangle. The third side has length x, and actually that's one of the things we need to calculate, the distance between O and L. Since we're dealing with a right angled triangle here, we can write down a formula for x directly. Using Pythagoras' formula, we have x squared is 10 squared plus 7 squared. That comes to 149. And so x must be the square root of 149. And that turns out to be 12.21 kilometers, where I've corrected the answer to two decimal places. That's the first part of our answer. Now, what about the direction of O from L? Seems like it ought to have something to do with that angle theta, doesn't it? Let's calculate the magnitude of theta and then address the problem of how we actually describe the direction. We've got a triangle with three sides, but two of them are exact, 10 and 7, 
while the last already has a decimal place correction applied to it. So let's keep the 10 and 7 in order to enhance our accuracy. 10 is opposite theta and 7 is adjacent. So we can write down tan theta is 10 over 7. If we now take inverse tan on both sides, we have theta is inverse tan of 10 over 7. And resorting to a calculator will tell us that that is 55.01 degrees. Again, correct to two decimal places. That's the magnitude of the angle theta, but we want to describe the direction of O from L. Turns out there are several ways that people use to do this. First of all, we could refer to the direction relative to the northerly direction. If that's the point L, north is straight up and the angle theta is pointing over here to the right. And when we talk about a direction from north, clockwise, in this way, we call it the true direction. So our direction is 55.01 degrees true. That's one way, but another way that is commonly used is to say that we start off thinking of the northerly direction, but then we veer 55.01 over towards the east. So we say that we are 55.01 degrees east of north. A variant of that is to say it a little bit more concisely, but confusingly, the directions now appear the opposite way round. We say north 55.01 degrees east. All three of those are valid ways of describing the direction of O from L. I'd like to do another example involving some of those intermediate directions, but I think that would make this maths cast a little bit long, so I'm going to do it in a second recording. Instead, I'm going to finish here by talking about a couple of points that are sometimes confusing. First of all, wind direction. When we talk about a south wind, it actually means that it comes from the south. That's confusing because we normally talk about directions going towards something, but it's very specific to the description of winds. A south wind comes from the south, an east wind comes from the east. In contrast, if we're talking about currents in water, we would normally talk about the direction the current flows in. So a current flowing towards the east or towards the southwest. It's just winds that have this special treatment. The last thing I want to do is to go back to that 55.01 degrees and talk about how we would convert that to degrees, minutes and seconds. Clearly it's 55 degrees plus 0.01 of a degree. We need to convert that 0.01 into minutes and seconds. Now, 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes, and so 0.01 degrees is 0.01 times 60 minutes, which is 0.6 minutes. So we have 55 degrees, 0.6 minutes. 0.6 is less than one minute, so we should convert that to seconds. 0.6 minutes is 0.6 times 60 seconds. That's 36 seconds. So finally, we would answer our bearing question by saying 55 degrees, no minutes, 36 seconds, true. I'm going to conclude there and we'll do a second example in part two.